Hello, everyone. Welcome to a bonus Geopolitical Futures podcast this week. I'm Jacob Shapiro, the Director of Analysis for GPF, but you're about to listen in on a conversation between George Friedman, who's the chairman of Geopolitical Futures, and Lucio Caracciolo, who is the head of the monthly Italian magazine called Limes. That's spelled limes for the English speakers out there, but is pronounced Limes. If you enjoy this conversation, you can Find more Limes material online at limesonline.com. Full disclosure, they publish in Italian, so you'll need working knowledge of Italian in order to access their information. Uh, We hope to have more conversations like this with other partners out there in the world. I'd also like to ask that you forgive the rough quality of some of the sound editing on this conversation. Uh, The hall that George and Lucio were talking in had very high ceilings, and though we can hide that a little bit, there's only so much you can do. Still, I thought the conversation was worthwhile and stimulating enough that perhaps you can forgive the high ceilings. I also just wanted to remind our listeners that if you want more analysis from myself or George or the rest of the team at Geopolitical Futures, you can find us online at www.geopoliticalfutures.com. We have a limited amount of content available for free, and you can also check out paid subscription options to get access to all the information you need on geopolitics, especially in this tumultuous week uh, with Donald Trump pulling the United States out of the Iran nuclear deal, Kim Jong-un and Xi Jinping meeting in China, and Israel and Iran certainly posturing like they're ready for a war. We'll see you next week. Have a great weekend. And now on to George and Lucio. Hi, I'm here with Lucio, who is the head of Limes, uh, the publisher. And Limes is the equivalent of us in Italy, in the sense that it is a publication that is not dedicated to ideology, to beliefs, but rather to careful analysis and debate of how the world is going. And we're sitting here in Genoa, Italy, not far from Columbus's house. And the first and most obvious question to ask an Italian is, how does he see the United States at this moment? Mm-hmm. Well, I was born in uh, the American Empire and uh, was a proud uh, citizen of Italy. I'm an Italian patriot, but I was well aware of the fact that uh, the United States was and still is our uh, guarantee in terms of security. Uh, At the same time, uh, we know, I know, that uh, we may have different interests in some areas, and most of all, that after the fall of the Berlin Wall, uh, the coherence of the western part of your uh, of the eastern part of your empire, uh, namely Western Europe, uh, uh, is in deep crisis. And what we need is some sense of American engagement in Europe. But we know and we see that this in- engagement is not uh, as strong as it was, uh, of course, a couple of years ago. Well, one of the things when people talk about engagement in Europe, the Americans ask is engagement with whom to do what? So obviously the global picture is different. The threat from the Soviet Union is not the same. But more important, the heart of Europe right now is Germany. And Germany is becoming more mysterious every day. It's becoming mysterious because it is not behaving as if it were a great European power Politically and militarily, it behaves that way as economically. Economically, it has weaknesses. Uh, militarily, it is completely vulnerable. So here is the heart of Europe uh, in this odd position. And then the question is, what is our relationship to Germany? To which the question becomes, what is Germany? First of all, Germany is, in my mind, not a nation. It's a collection of tribes. Uh, If you go to Bavaria, you have one kind of Germany. If you go to Berlin, you have another one. If you go to Cologne or to Hamburg, you have other Germanys. And um, not being a nation state at the same time, um, it is not able to really understand how nation states behave in Europe. We, as Italy, I think, are more a nation state than, for example, uh, Germany is first. Second, uh, they are not a hegemonic power uh, because of um, uh, 
cultural problems, which I mentioned before, but because their um, economic model also is based on exporting deflation and absorbing liquidity from their, uh, from their European partners. This is the net effect of uh, uh, the euro system we built in Europe uh, after uh, the end of the Cold War. And it's very interesting that, in fact, this system was meant as anti-German and uh, it was transformed uh, by the Germans in, an, uh, in a tool of their economic power. And we know, last point, that Germany is not and will never become a military power. Our armed forces are superior to the Germans. Well, this poses the obvious problem. The, in a way, the European Union was founded to contain Germany. Its purpose was to end the war, to end the wars uh, that Germany had participated in by enclosing Germany in a geopolitical structure like the European Union. Now, as you said, it's turned it around and the, the shell of Germany has become Germany on top. The problem with Germany, of course, is that it is trying to regulate a Europe which is so wildly diverse. The difference between Italy and Poland, and Poland and Denmark, and Denmark and um, Portugal, I mean, these are enormous differences. Yet the European Union still wants to have a one-size-fits-all political structure. And we can see this in the confrontation between uh, Poland and uh, Germany, between Hungary and Germany. So. Where do you think this all comes out? I mean, how does the multiplicity of Europe's play out in a single European Union? Well, we discovered America and you invented Europe. Uh, and to be more precise, you invented Western Europe against the Soviet Union to contain the Soviet Union and at the same time to contain Germany. I very much remember the famous dictum by Lord Ismay, uh, the Americans saying Russians out and Germans down. That is still valid to some extent in the mind of the uh, continental European elites, and British elites too. Uh, but I think that what has changed is that um, we um, have now a structure in Europe which is disintegrating because the lack of uh, a common interest, which was a, a defense led by the United States against Soviet Russia. I personally don't think that Russia is now an expansionist power. They have to survive, first of all, and they have to defend their red lines. Uh, so this is a point which is probably uh, not exactly the one a guy living in Stockholm or living in uh, uh, Warsaw or in, uh, uh, say, in uh, Vilnius may have. Um, this is a big difference. Um, another point is that uh, Germany is not able to uh, be accepted uh, for historical reasons, for cultural reasons, for her language, by the way, um, as a, a true leader by any European power, in, uh, starting with France. One of the oddest couple in Europe is the so-called uh, uh, French-German alliance, which is not at all an alliance. Well, the real question is, what is happening inside of Russia then? Because you've raised the question of, there are really two poles to Europe at the moment. One is Germany, and the other is Russia. And both are European powers, although Europe mm -hmm. doesn't always see Russia as European. Germany has an economic problem. It exports 50% of its GDP. And its largest customer is the United States. And this raises the question, how does it weather American business cycles? The Russians depend on the price of oil. The price of oil has fallen. The question is, how does Russia manage their economy? In times of economic stress, uh, both Germany and Russia have a historical model of becoming more politically aggressive. So the question is, right now we can agree that Russia is not an aggressive threat. We can agree that Germany is not going to develop a Bundeswehr that is a threat. Imagine that going forward, where economic dysfunction becomes important, can you see a difference? Well, uh, 
first of all, I think that uh, it's not only a problem of Bundeswehr, it's a problem of strategic culture. For example, in Germany, you can't still use the word geopolitik uh, because it, uh, it is linked, in my view, not exactly in a precise way, to uh, Nazism, etc. Um, I don't think that the economy is that important, generally speaking, and uh, particularly in, in Europe. I think that history is more important, that um, c uh, nations with uh, historical depth uh, have um, some kind of uh, common understanding of the world, and nations like Germany, which are probably not true nations and which have uh, a different uh, structure, may have uh, problems with uh, letting themselves being understood by others. As far as Russia is concerned, I think that Russia is very much part of the European balance of power. And um, I think that in any case, the weaknesses of uh, Russia uh, may become a structural problem for everybody, uh, starting for us in Europe and maybe also for you in America, if this uh, good state fails and if the structure of uh, a nuclear power collapses. So the last subject, the one that is usually never mentioned, is Britain. We were recently in, Pol in uh, Portugal, and there they spoke continually as if Britain were a power at which, with which they could align. Uh, in the United States, Britain is seen in many cases as an alternative to the continent, as historically it was. If you talk about it in Europe, it's a problem. Uh, Britain is leaving it is entering into a closer relationship with the United States. Will this happen, given that Australia has a free trade agreement with the United States, given the European participa British participation in American wars in Iraq and Afghanistan in a way that other nations didn't? There is a bond in there, and, a, and also a sense of a debt, also a commonality of language, culture, and history, and also the Americans don't particularly like the Germans, and it would irritate them a great deal and make them feel better about everything. Like the Brits. <laughs> so, so we do the British. However, in Portugal, this seems very plausible. In Germany, this would be the nightmare. In other parts of Europe, they have different views. What is the Italian view of an American-UK relationship? First of all, uh, I don't think that the UK is living because the UK never really entered Europe. Uh, it was formally part of parts of our agreements. For example, they were never interested in the euro, on the contrary. And um, I think that they have uh, another point of view as a maritime power, as a, an oceanic power, uh, as, an and as, as an empire uh, to uh, continental Europe. So they were not part of it. They were much more uh, on your side. Um, by the way, in any uh, relevant war which was fought in the last uh, 100 years. And uh, I think what is relevant now is that um, Germany fears that by uh, the UK uh, formally leaving the uh, European Union, which is not united at all, uh, this will bring more power to Southern Europe and will uh, um, may produce some problems in terms of building coalitions around Germany because the, the Germans use the Brits in many cases against us. Um, uh, the curious thing is that Italy was in favor of uh, um, the Brits becoming full members of the European Union because we wanted to create a balance we and the Brits together against France and Germany which was in my view a uh, complete uh, nightmare and mistake. And now we think that we are, because of that, the power number three uh, in Europe. But I still have to know uh, a German or a French who considers Italy uh, power number three. Well, I will consider it power number three for the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you. I want to thank you for inviting me to Linus and this conference where I've learned a great deal. And I'm delighted to see an organization that thinks like us, even when we disagree, and hope to be able to work together with you in enlightening the world and the truth, such as we see it, such as it might be. Let's not carry it too far.
anyway, thank you very much, and hopefully we'll do this again. Thank you, George. We share the same goals, namely have good analysis and stimulating a public debate on that. Thanks. Thanks.